introduce you an Italian physicist, Giulio Magrin, who began studying ionizing radiation and the medical applications of microdosimetry in 1891 at the uh, laboratories of Lennaro. As a visiting researcher at the Columbia University, he has used the microdosimetry in diagnostics in the framework of the Terra Foundation, hosted at CERN and led by Guamaldi, he has developed innovative proton accelerators for therapy. In the same context, he worked at ADAM, a Swiss company born as a spin-off of CERN. And since 2011, he has combined his experiences in microdosimetry and in ion accelerators by working at Medestron. He has coordinated a European network activity in microdosimetry and collaborates with the IA and he holds a patent on accelerators for ion therapy, and so it's time to give him the floor. Thanks, uh, Giulio, for uh, your talk, and um, if needed, ask for our support in sharing the screen. I will Thanks. tell you when five minutes will be left. So just confirm that you are seeing my... Perfectly, your first slide. Nice my screen. Okay, thank you very much. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about linear energy transfer and linear energy, which is uh, the topic of my studies or my life, I would say in the past uh, years. Why? Uh, so just a quick agenda, motivation, why we are uh, looking at this topic, why I want to share this uh, information with you. Uh, in the first part, uh, I will deal a little bit with definition and how the concept of, um, of, the, of the two quantities are can we can play with. I don't know if it is okay for you to have a discussion at that point. Uh, I, I would be eventually a possibility just to give a little bit of interaction. And the second part will be actually in using these quantities that I described before in a, a clinical environment, preclinical and clinical environment. And concluding this as a, a vision, what we are in, at Medostron, we are trying to, to see for the future of, uh, of this concept. The motivation, why do we need to look at radiation quality? Well, radiation quality is the general terms for the, for the two. Uh, I don't think we, you need to, for me, any explanation why those it is not sufficient to describe the radiation field. We, as a physicist and as a experimental physicist and detector physicist, we want to, to characterize what is the other characteristics of the radiation, which is linked to uh, the effects, the clinical effects. So together with quality, what is the complementing information that uh, is uh, characterizing the biological effects? Um, this is the radiation quality, which is energy uh, in uh, microscopic or even nanoscopic volumes. Is the motivation, can we uh, perfectly describe the mechanism that link uh, physical quantity, dose and radiation quality to the outcomes of clinics? Uh, well, the answer is no in this uh, 70 years and more of, of research. I don't think uh, we, uh, we reached we that there were some uh, improvements, some better description of the radiation quality, but still we were not. This is not a, a feasible goal that we uh, we can um, follow. But still, it is essential. It is a, an essential information. So, and although we can, we will not be able to perfectly characterize the, the clinical outcomes. It is important to characterize them. Uh, so, the goal of the research is to find. Univ uni univocal ways to describe the radiation quality. So um, to build up over this, the uh, possible uh, links to the um, outcome from, from patient. Radiation quality uh, in the most general form, uh, well, first of all, it is not easy to find a definition of radiation quality. Also in uh, uh, the reports that uh, have the title radiation quality. So just to, to be clear what it is, the radiation quality as it is defined by ICRU, I would say implicitly. So it is the nature and the velocity of the charged particle that deliver the dose. 
we can somehow rephrase uh, this definition. It is the type and the energy of the particle crossing the site. So basically, it is a very simple definition. If we have a small site of a few micrometer, we can think that, uh, that the radiation quality has all, the, the, we define every particle that cross in what particle it is, if it is full, if it is not, well, uh, yeah, I enter already in some uh, um, uh, not precise field, but if it is a proton or if it is an electron, for instance, so defining what it is the, uh, the particle and what is its, its energy. So from the point of view of this definition, it is a very simple definition. Unfortunately, experimentally, this is not exactly easy or feasible most of the time because we should uh, be able to characterize every particle in the spectrum of energy that it is crossing the specific uh, uh, um, site, the, the specific uh, endpoint um, site of the, uh, of, the, of the target. What we use in terms for radiation quality is the specifiers. The term specifiers was uh, invented by Rossi uh, 70 years ago. Maybe it is not a perfect English, but that the idea is that there is specification, indirect specification of the radiation quality. One is the linear energy transfer, uh, which is uh, color coding red in the, the next of the presentation, and the other is linear energy which is uh, even in the names, they are similar, but not the same. And that I would say it is the light motive of my presentation here. Uh, LET is the uh, specification of radiation quality used in clinics today. Linear energy was used uh, in many clinical beams to investigate the beams, proton and carbon ion mainly, to investigate how this uh, how this beam are characterizing the uh, are characterizing linear energy. So in, in different ways, they are both connected to clinics. I would skip uh, the perfect definition for, for the moment. Just I promise much is not to be too boring. I hope uh, it will be not too boring what I describe la later on. Uh, so these two definitions, eventually, if there is some interest, I will just go back into the uh, at the end of the of the uh, of the talk, just the idea is that linear energy as well had the, uh, uh, so both quantities they have a, a, they are the ratio from an energy and uh, a length which is of the order of micrometer. Um, this this linear energy is after all uh, not so complicated the uh, definition, but we we go to the lineal energy, we had to consider uh, four different uh, definition of four different energies. So I, I would like to skip them for the moment, just to say it is both quantities are the ratio of an energy and the, and the length. We try to define uh, these uh, two, or at least to have an idea of what uh, these two quantities are, uh, saying, that uh, looking at the, the characteristics, actually at the different characteristics this, that this uh, quantity are. And these are the list of, I don't know if uh, some of you is familiar with uh, LET concept and linear energy concept, but uh, I'm sure that those familiar with these concepts, uh, they, are, they, they saw this kind of, uh, uh, characteristics of the energy in the two uh, for the two definitions and how they are actually um, characteristics that are really um, describing the different uh, approach that uh, LET and the linear energy have in the characterization of the radiation. And we will try to go one by one and that will be a sort of helping uh, uh, the definition of the, of the two quantities. First and most important is LET is a non-stochastic quantity, while lineal energy, it is a, a stochastic quantity. So starting from this, let's have a look at what it is mean. Um, LET is, is a stochastic, uh, a, a non-stochastic quantity, meaning that uh, there is no uh, um, probability that the particle with a certain energy crossing a certain volume 
uh, changing its behavior. In the uh, left part of, of this uh, slide, I, I just tried to uh, describe it with a very simplified illustra uh, illustration. It is very simplified, so it is basically not correct, but just to give you an idea of what it can be uh, uh, the characterization of the LET. A particle, a primary particle, crosses the, the medium. Actually, it is not important how, how far it is from the electrons. The electrons are moved for the, uh, the, the, the medium, and their energy is the same for each one of these electrons. So it is very unrealistic condition that it is expressed from the LET. The idea is that the LET is independent. It, there is no stochastic behavior. So LET depends only on the energy of the primary particle and on the material that it is crossing. So basically, this, is, this illustration shows that all the electrons that are moved are uh, removed uh, for the the, the the length corresponding to a fixed energy, which is the average energy of each electron. If we go to represent the mm, energy exchange with uh, in, in a more realistic uh, environment as the, the one of micro dosimeter space, uh, we see that every electron has two, uh, it undergoes two different uh, uh, stochastic process. One, it is the probability of encountering uh, uh, the primary particle from encountering the, the electron itself. And the second one is the distribution of energies that each of the electrons is, uh, is getting. So if we go to the representation and to show how different the two behaviors are, I guess it's the most uh, significant approach is looking at uh, the single collision with, uh, so the primary particle collides with uh, electrons, with a single electron uh, of the medium. LET evidently has only one possibility, so only one uh, type of energy, one valuable energy, it, can, it is transferred from the uh, primary particle to the medium, while lineal energy on the right side it is actually have a very uh, variable uh, distribution of energy. The, what is this uh, curve, uh, which is the Rutherford distribution, the collision of the primary particle with a single electron of, of the medium? Basically, it is telling us that there are a very high probability of having very low energy exchange. So every, there is very high probability of having a large, uh, a, a small energy exchange, so transfer in part to, to the electrons, uh, very low energy, and the very low probability, and that is very, extremely low because it goes to zero quite, quite uh, close to zero quite uh, quickly. When we do have an high energy probability, it doesn't mean that it is zero. Actually, this curve to be represented correctly should be expanded uh, several order of magnitude. And uh, to give you a, a better interpretation, we just transform the distribution in a distribution which is basically a, a second representation of the same concept. On the right side here, we see how a single electron uh, it, what is the, the, the distribution of the energy that a single electron can have in colliding with a pri primary particle? Well, here uh, there are basically the Rutherford di distribution, that, which is one over the square value of the energy. It is multiplied by the square value of the energy. What, the first one is due to the fact that instead of of frequency distribution, we go to energy distribution. And the second uh, um, multiplication by the energy is due to that, is, is thanks to the fact that we are representing the, this, uh, this spectra in a logarithmic scale. And we want to maintain the so-called area rule. The area rule tells us that uh, in the low energy part, we have a lot of, uh, of, uh, of collision, and but uh, the sum of the I'm sorry, the sum of the collision, it is actually uh, the same. It is constant, with a very few, very rare collision that we are very energetic. So basically, Rutherford tells us that there is very low probability of having the highest energy in the collision and very high probability. 
And this is just to show you that there are, in this case, three order of magnitudes, three order of magnitude uh, in this uh, kind of, uh, of um, in, the, in this uh, representation. So from the Dirac delta to three order of magnitude distribution, the single electronic collision is definitely the two quantities, the base of the two quantities as extremely different. Well, what, what happens when we have multiple collision? Well, when we have a, a detector or, or, a, or a site as a, a nucleus of the, our cells of micro, micro magnitude measurement, we can have thousands of 10,000 of single electron collision. So let's look again to the right part of this, fun this function. The very uh, asymmetric Rutherford distribution becomes slowly is more symmetric and they approach the Gaussian distribution. This is the, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the central limit theorem, which is basically the, the nice expression of this theorem that it doesn't matter what it is, the original distribution, the sum of the distribution uh, um, becomes uh, in, at a certain point a Gaussian distribution. So we say in 1,000 collision. The primary particle crosses our uh, our site and in, uh, and uh, coll collides with uh, a thousand of electrons. Well, of course, the LET will be always the same, uh, the, um, Dirac delta, on the microdosimetric side. Slowly, we approach to something not exactly similar to a Dirac delta, but something more more at least less different of what it was the Rutherford. And uh, if we move from uh, 1,000 to 10,000, or sometimes at the very um, peak of the Bragg peak, we have uh, several uh, tens of thousands of collision, the two dis the distribution become more similar. And this is basically what it was, the difference of the stochastic. I don't know if it, I was able to, show you what it is, the single collision, what uh, we can, in many collision, uh, see some sort of similarity between LET and the uh, microdosimetric uh, quantity. Just to say, LET is generally computed. So either through anal in an analytical form or through Monte Carlo simulation, and uh, why? So the linear energy is generally experimental. It is the, uh, the result of experimental uh, uh, condition. This is a general thing, also because uh, we can. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure if the find the simulation has uh, experimental or, or simple computation. But the, basically, the two quantities are belong to two separate uh, fields of research. Let's go to the next uh, uh, few concepts. Uh, let's read them, but basically they are all connected together. So uh, the energy is uh, in a linear energy, uh, for the linear energy is the energy imparted. So the uh, shape of the detector, which is considered, is the, 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 the most important factor. So basically we focus the energy on the site that it is, uh, in, um, in which is under re re radiation. Instead, for what we look uh, from the point of view of LET, we focus the energy on the, pro pro from, on the primary particle, the particle that crossed the, the, the medium. So uh, from, in one case, the energy is the transfer from, from the, the energy transfer from the, from the coming particle, the other is the energy imparted to the site. Um, there is another important factor that uh, LET is based only on electronic collision. So the energy exchange in electronic collision, linear energy, it is actually all the possible energies that can be uh, the result of the interaction of the primary particle with uh, the the, the site. We can have some sort of, uh, at least for me, it is helpful to think that uh, uh, basically, because of the definition that uh, LET is the, uh, the electronic condition, uh, LET is 
coincide with the electronic stopping power. So for those of you who are familiar with electronic stopping power, I guess there is no problem to understand that a single particle with a single energy has a single value of electron stopping power. It is, of course, a, a value that it is the, the result of, of average. But uh, that helps me to remember that LET is fixed for a single particle, but also that LET can be a property of a single particle. It is not necessarily a property of a beam, but a single particle defining type and energy as a defined LET value. So different users use the, the same quantity. Linear energy is the energy that we can uh, collect uh, in forms of charge in our detector. In somehow, somehow this energy can be originated by different, uh, not only from electrons, but also from a nuclear interaction. And uh, is it important? In the field of ion beam therapy, it is not important and so much the nuclear interaction, at least the, um, we know from the electronics, uh, from the stopping power table that the nuclear, uh, uh, the, uh, the nuclear interaction the, uh, that uh, happened in the most, the widest range of, uh, of the uh, energies used in the ion beam therapy the elastic nuclear interaction are only a fraction of the total nuclear interaction. So for the moment, we can consider that, although there are non-elastic uh, nuclear interaction, we can consider that in our field, these uh, are uh, not uh, so important, uh, th th this difference in the, um, the fact that we also consider nuclear interaction in the um, um, uh, in the characterization of the linear energy. The last, and I guess also very important here, is the, how the delta rays, so the uh, electrons that are generated in the collision are considered in the two definition. Well, we have, we, I said before, the definition of what it is the unrestricted LET. So in which in a definition where all the total energy of the delta ray is considered in the transfer of energy. Well, if we uh, use a restricted, the, so if we uh, consider the, rest, the definition of restricted LET, we can uh, consider a threshold, which is the, the maximum uh, energy uh, which is the energy considered for each of the electron that is uh, generated. And uh, above that energy, no energy is considered in the definition of the LET. So again, in a very simplified illustration, which is, it is limited in this somehow, but just to give you the, the feeling of what it is happening, basically only the energy within a certain interval or energy is considered for all the detect all the diamond um, all the sorry electrons that are generating in our in our um, target the idea is that we want to look at the energy in, uh, transferred locally to the to the target so transferred to in the proximity of the trajectory of the of the primary particle for what consi consists uh, in our detector, this is just uh, the square here is the representation of a cubic, if you want, uh, micro dosimeter. The particles that are crossing, th that are imparting energy can cross the border of the detector. And somehow, so the energy is not the complete energy of the, all the electrons generated, especially for small uh, detectors, small micro dosimeter. Also, some of the particles that are generated from other primary particles can enter our detector. And so they can uh, transform our distribution of um, um, uh, linear energy. So if we look at this curve, LET, Unrestricted is a delta direct delta. If it is restricted, every the average energy of every electron is, la, is lower. So basically, it is a representation that it is drifted toward 
lower uh, value if we consider a restriction and the, we can basically decide ourselves what is the maximum energy of a delta. So uh, LET 100, what I was mentioning before, it is 100 electron volts, so very local, uh, um, very local electron uh, energy transfer to the electron. When we consider instead the energy of uh, uh, in a small detector, when the, the many electrons generated in our uh, uh, detectors are crossing the, the border of the detector, so not de detected anymore, we will have the original quasi Gaussian uh, peak that it is moved toward the also lower values. But in the case of our micro dosimeter, is uh, a sort of in, uh, consider as an equilibrium in um, energy equilibrium in the medium, we have a part of the energy that it is lost, that it is actually coming back in forms of delta or single event due to the electrons themselves. They are not correlated to the primary particle or they are the electrons here, but are primary particles crossing outside our detector. And then they, they form this bump here at lower energy. And just to, to make a little to observe promotion, there is a paper that was just published in uh, uh, experimental data that uh, confirmed this, uh, this behavior of the electron. So I understand that uh, it was a lot of information, maybe some sort of uh, uh, new things uh, for some of you or uh, old things that uh, revisited in another way. I, I don't know if it is there is any comment from your side. I would appreciate if you have some questions at this time. Otherwise, I can just continue and go more specifically on what it is uh, the two quantities are in the field of ion beam therapy. Monica? Yes, ma'am. Since, since it's a fairly new concept, maybe it's not a bad idea to give the students a little bit of possibility to ask questions. Yeah, why not? Uh, we can profit of the division in parts. And so please, uh, students, if you have any question, do not hesitate. And Christops will support us in this uh, phase. It is OK if there are no questions. I mean, this is just to help us. Uh, uh, maybe a small, small question from my side. Uh, in case of uh, let calculation, is there um, sort of some limit at which ions we are not so good with calculations for the LET values anymore? Because I think there are like uncertainties arising if we go with like heavier and heavier ions. Um, we, because of that equ equation that I said, stopping power, elect electron stopping power equals the LET, every, every uncertainty coming from the electron stopping power is the same uncertainty that uh, goes to the LET. There are, how it is, I'm talking about the, the, LET, um, the stopping power table, for instance, the ICRU or uh, stream table or other sources of table, those are based on experiments, but experiments are limited and especially they are focused on some project from primary particle. We have a lot uh, in uh, target, for instance, in uh, graphite and water, but other targets are just extrapolated for that. So it is true that uncertainty is high. These values are reported with uncertainty, depends on the energy between 5% and 10% in some energy. Uh, some cases, the, the value of stopping power has, has as high as 10 or maybe more percent. And this is uh, well described in the, in the ICRU uh, specific uh, table, the one for uh, uh, hydrogen and uh, helium. And the one about, uh, there are two publications. One, it is more recent, 10 years ago, in the article above uh, helium. Uh, all the theory and all the uncertainties are reported there. I have to say in the field of therapy, though, the uncertainty that we use 
for referring uh, LET, and it is also used in a micro dosimetry. There is uh, LET is used to calibrate micro dosimeters. So the five percent, which is basically the minimum energy that we can consider, the minimum uncertainty that we can consider, it is, at my feeling, above of what it is really the the, the uncertainty. So we are more precise with our measurement and with and I mean, these tables, these LET values are defined with higher precision than what they claim. But this is what, uh, you know, the whole process of collecting data, uh, real data from real particles and uh, real target and extrapolating this uh, data to other particle and other targets. So this um, 5%, at least for carbon ion, especially because we use carbon ion in, in diamond, so for sure it is similar enough to carbon ion in, uh, in graphite. Uh, we do also use other uh, tar uh, targets, uh, silicon or gas or propane gas or water, I mean the water equivalent uh, material. But in that case, we should have a better definition of LED because graphite and uh, it is, you know, in the calorimetry, there is a lot of uh, data in, uh, for graphite. So for diamonds, which are similar, I would say we always use the 5%, but it is a, an ex exaggeration from my side. Okay, thank you. We have a comment, Manjit. Only if there is nobody else. Not that I see. Slack and chat is empty. Okay, so so Julio, interesting this uh, difference between linear and lineal, and most of us, of course, as uh, biologists, only know about LET because we don't think about the other concept. What do you think are the consequences of these differences in application radiobiology clinically? Or does it make a difference? Uh, I'm thinking if it is the next slide, that would be probably the most. Um, okay, so then, yes, then don't it then is I the leave next, it for your uh, second slide. That I would okay, say. So then, so then but it is good. I didn't it is say good it. To, yeah. It is good to enter in this uh, topic with a question. So yeah. these are the similarities. No? We say that uh, at the entrance, so the dashed line here and the dashed line here. We have something close to a delta, direct delta, close to a direct delta, and close to a, a small, a, a, a steep um, quasi-Gaussian curve. Progressing, and then I don't show you here. This is just, a, these are just, a, I did it without uh, any reference direct to, to real data. I just designed you know, over, uh, uh, semi-logarithmic spectra. So, but the idea is that progressively moving to higher energy, this curve, both LET and uh, lineal energy move toward uh, some sort of uh, similar behavior. And uh, so uh, it is an open question what you asked. Uh, yes, is it uh, different? Absolutely, it is different. There is some similarities and uh, Basically, I have also to say that uh, this part here, we said that uh, mm, LET is a non-stochastic uh, uh, quantity. Why do we represent it with distribution? This is a very important concept. Let me just focus for this before continuing with the answer. The, it is important to, 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 to focus on this concept because it is a distribution of LET. So LET is a non-stochastic quantity, meaning that energy of the particle define what it is the LET value. But when we, we, we move from uh, the entrance to the end of the path of the, the cells, there are all the stochastic uh, behavior of the energy struggling. So the particle crosses 20, 10, 20, 30 centimeters of water equivalent tissue. And then in this crossing, the monoenergetic beam change its energy. Also at the end of the path, small changes of energies correspond to large energy exchanges of LET. So in that sense, we have distribution 
of a dt distribution of a quantity which is a stochastic quantity um, this is the base of the let what happens to the micro dosimetric spectra well the spectra actually have a sort of um, um, it is uh, the, uh, how the spectra are created basically they also have a dependence on the shape of the detector and of course also of the material of the detector so there are some differences that are in in that sense but the, the similarity and i guess the, the reason why the two quantities are often overlapped is because of this because of the fact that the movement i mean the the the, the same beam makes a representation of, over the two different quantities that are somehow correlated and uh, this correlation can be visually seen here it is not a perfect correlation also because it is squeezed by the fact that this is a logarithmic scale um, quantity but there is a, co a correlation so in these terms we can say that uh, we can use one or the other at least uh, for the most important effects that the radiation quality can show in the field of ion beam therapy. It is a very, uh, it is a debated, uh, a debated field. I have to say also that when we use, uh, in, at the entrance in particular, when we use LET here, we don't use the restricted LET, we use the unrestricted LET. So for sure, especially at the entrance where we have high energy of the primary particle, delta ray escape from the, the real volume of interest to the, the few micrometer of the, of, the, of, the, of the cell. So we are overestimating the LET. The, the value of LET is higher than what it is really, what it is the energy transfer to, to the cell material. Yet there is this behavior that it is moving the highest step from from uh, left to right. Uh, are we committing a crime to use one or the other? I don't think so because the, uh, the, what it is used now, the, the the radiation quality is used to characterize a transition, if you want, from the from different uh, energies. But uh, the the idea is that, uh, of course, the 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 real uh, energy imparted should be studied. We should spend uh, the time that it is necessary to give a better representation. I don't think I am I'm partisan saying that microdosimetry is the best uh, way of characterizing what it is happening at the cell. But even here, and I will uh, go back to this topic later on, uh, we have to be very careful of what we intend for microdosimeters and what we what we should be careful in doing that just to give you an idea since this basically is this physics so we should be able to transfer from one transition to the other another um, self-promotion I, I would say that a few years ago i published a, a paper in which we i tried to transform the let distribution to a generic distribution in a generic micro dosimeter so there is a way not super easy not uh, maybe feasible in, in clinic uh, but uh, that uh, the correlation between the two of them can be studied and the approximation is not so bad so the idea that moving from one to another is possible the idea is also that uh, med clinical clinically speaking uh, the the quantities are always reported in average let so we have to deal with LET also if we believe that the microdosimetry may be more significant in terms of cell. So let's go to clinic. Uh, some concept in clinics are uh, linked to lineal energy, so to the experimental um, characterization of, of radiation quality. Uh, are these uh, the topic, the RBE, microdosimetrically uh, evaluated. The local effect model, we see how the, it is correlated to radiation quality and the microdosimetric method model. Just uh, one slide each or just a little bit more, just to go to the concept. Long ago, uh, four, 30 years ago, uh, it was proposed to find a function of the lineal energy 
that was able to correlate with the radiobiological data available at the time for photon, neutron, or, or uh, proton irradiation. Basically, looking at the radiobiological effects and looking at the uh, microdosimetric distribution of each one of these uh, different uh, radiation, it, a, a function, a weighting function was unfolded in order to have a, a, a result of this integral that coincide or which is uh, approximate well with the uh, radiobiological data. Just to show you, uh, I mean, the, the concept was expressed in the 90 by PA. Long call is a famous paper that it is cited in the many of the following uh, research. And the, the concept was revisited by Parisi more recently using not only this uh, ionizing particle, but uh, ion up to uranium, actually. So much extending the concept. What is the concept just showing uh, how it operates? So the, the product of, of these two, so this is the weighting function that I showed before. The blue one is the a spectrum, a microdosimetric spectrum as it was co collected. And basically the green function is the product of the two. So basically the, the filter produced by the biological response function in the microdosimetric uh, spectrum. Evidently here, there is an increase of the effect of the radiation between let's say around 30 kV and 200 kV. So basically this uh, unfolding function shows how Harvey E is focusing on this interval of linear energy because it is this the most important when uh, it is calculated. Basically, Harvey E is a single value. So the result of this uh, integral is the area of this curve. So the most important area is the one that it is defined by this interval of the R function. So important to say that the highest value of linear energies are not so uh, important in the definition of RBE. And that is the consequence of, of this, uh, of this um, um, unfolding function of the, the so-called long color unfolding function. Let's go to uh, treatment planning. Treatment planning is in clinical. So that is a sort of what I saw, showed before for so RBE is the preclinical, if you want. It is what, uh, how we approach to RBE. And that is in correlation with, with uh, microdosimetry. Here it is the clinical. Where is used the, uh, the concept of radiation quality in clinics? Only in treatment planning. There is no use in clinics of any other uh, Use, there is no other use of radiation quality in any other use. So there is no commissioning of the beams or carbon ion beams looking at radiation quality parameters and no, uh, not even in a, not regular check for uh, quality assurance in radiation quality. Local effect model is the model that I'm sure you discussed uh, already several times in these um, meetings. And uh, the MKM model, uh, microdosimetric kinetic model, is the one used uh, basically. Uh, one, it is more German and European based in the centers, and this is used in Japan. Well, local effect model has uh, the general idea is that uh, the density of the, the, the uh, at different uh, distances from the uh, from the trajectory of the primary ion, there are different uh, doses, and these doses are actually the uh, element uh, to use to calculate the effects. So the closer the uh, volume is to the uh, axis, beam axis, the higher is the the dose in that uh, in that point. So the higher is the probability of uh, um, of effect of this planet. We cannot correlate this in any uh, in any way with the microdosimetric uh, microdosimetric quantity. If you recall what I show you before, basically microdosimetry is cutting the uh, uh, long 
along the, 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 the beam. So if we, we look at the ionization all along the beam, uh, this is more actually what it is expressed in local effect mode. It is more an anodosymmetric uh, analysis, which is actually looking at what it is done transversally to the beam. And then we can go back to this concept, but I, I don't have much time to go through that and talking about nanodosimetry. Nano, nano Microdosimetric kinetic model, it is also a model that uh, I would say uh, it is what is important for, for us do, doing microdosimetry, that microdosimetry was cited in this, uh, in this uh, model. So specifically cited, I guess many group have, or many researcher, many people in the, in the field, have an interest in microdosimetry because of this uh, of this term. So there is a very, um, I mean, that, that was very important for the for the uh, for the community of, of experimental microdosimetry. I would say we, we don't recognize it so far so so much, but it is it was important. The idea is that RBE is linked to a, the alpha, which is the alpha. It is the famous uh, parameter due to in the survival curve. And this alpha is actually linked to a microdosimetric quantity, which is a quantity not, uh, we will see how it is correlated to, with microdosimetry. The saturation corrected dose mean linear energy. So it is the dose mean linear energy, but there is a correction due to the saturation effect. So RBE is dependent of linear energy. Well, the, 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 the real form, the formula expressing this is actually a little bit complicated, but we can see the, the saturation co corrected uh, function and the effect that we have on the dose uh, mean uh, uh, linear energy corrected by that function, it, it is, very similar to what we saw for the RBE microdosimetric calculator. So it is the distribution of uh, linear energy in those multiplied by a weighting function. And guess what? Since we are talking, we are co correlated with RBE, this weighting function and the weighting function of long call that I cited before, they are not so different, actually. They are a peak that it is around 200 uh, kV. And, but basically they have uh, low effect on this part on the lowest part of the linear energy and low effect at the highest part of the linear energy. So basically we, again, if we deal with RBE, we see that there is a response of linear energy uh, to, to, to the linear energy that it is not so important for the highest value of linear energy. Not that this, you know, this is somehow if you want, we, we spend so much time in collecting a, a complicated time to interpret in making an interpretation of what it is the linear energy and what it is that the function that we are uh, able to, to, to estimate experimentally. And then only one value is coming out. So it is not frustration, but we, we are just looking at, uh, at this, uh, what we are able to find through um, experimental spectra, microdosimetric spectra, is this the only way that we can use them? Well, let's have an a, a outlook of what it is uh, some recent uh, clinical data are showing us. This is for us, uh, especially the, the first uh, paper that uh, Ajiwara published a couple of years ago. For, for me and for us in the field, I guess it was a, a, a turning point because for the first time, a radiation quality uh, quantity was correlated to clinical effect. So it, there is not directly, it, it was of course also, the radiation was also uh, uh, considered on considering the, 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 the RBE, but uh, what was the uh, in, uh, investigation was to correlate what was the linear energy and the other two also, this, the first one is for pancreatic tumor, but also called as cordoma, where we are considering another, another investigation. The, the link of the positive outcome of the radiation, in this case, it, it is the tumor control of the radiation, that was linked to the value of 
LET mediating in those in the sub volume of of the in the sub volume of the of the tumor in which it is divided in the tumor to guarantee that each sub volume the max the the minimum value of LET was above 50 kV per micron and uh, that is the turning point because it is uh, looking at some sort of effectiveness of the of the radiation which is linked directly to uh, radiation quality factor I, I go again focusing on uh, agiwara pancreatic tumor study that was the the outcome uh, the, the the tumor local control was 100% uh, compared to uh, lower uh, local control it, it was not possible during the radiation to give radiation above uh, um, those uh, lineal energy, uh, linear, uh, those LET above 50 kV. This is not possible to find any RBE function that uh, justifies this, uh, this outcome. So we cannot use RBE as we know to show this, uh, to, to optimize if you want uh, the radiation. Uh, again, as I said before, high LET values that are under, uh, underweighted because of the weighting function on RBE, are, now they, they play a fundamental role because it is important to give to the tumor, according to this uh, investigation, the highest, possible, uh, the highest possible LET when we are um, irradiating the tumor. So we have to find the best way of increasing the LET in the tumor. Uh, sorry for stepping in. Just would like to tell you that five minutes left for your presentation. Sure, sure. I'm, I'm very close to the, to the end. Thanks and then the idea is that uh, basically um, uh, we, we need uh, high values. And then uh, is this the best way? Of course, the, the study were done with uh, data that were that are available today. So only on LET, average LET values. But can we do something better? Uh, can we, what, is there an advantage of using the distribution? So that is what we are trying to do. And that is the program that we are trying to implement in the past, next few years here. And it is to use microdosimetric uh, function. So uh, of course we can just go through a sort of channel here, collect uh, microdosimetric uh, data in uh, uh, anthropomorphic function, collect the, 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 uh, the, the spectra that we have in those different points. And basically from that recreate a sort of spread out break peak in which we can uh, define ISO radiation quality uh, limits. Basically we can say what is the, in this uh, spread out break peak for carbon ion, we can say we are uh, actually the number of, uh, of, of, uh, of interface uh, or of li lines that separate the different uh, uh, linear energy can be as high as we want, but just to here to simplify in the three areas, we can basically, based on the microdosimetric uh, analysis, or microdosimetric analysis converted to LET, if we want to talk the, the language of the clinical uh, people, uh, can do in representing the RBE. So we can, of course, the average is one of the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the quantity that we can report there, but this is a, a sort of more uh, sophisticated way of representing the, the, the beam. So we can basically uh, sample the, the uh, spread out break peak, the dose of the spread out break peak, also according to the fraction of that dose uh, in a certain interval of, of uh, linear LET. And of course, if we can do it for one, we can consider two opposite beam and find what is the best way of uh, characterizing the irradiation of a tumor with two uh, with uh, intervals of LET for which we expect to have a different uh, biological or clinical uh, effectiveness. 
Just to conclude, uh, everything is nice when you talk about the future, but uh, we have a lot of work to do. First of all, microdosimetry is not a unique, uh, univocal expression of the radiation. Uh, these are, uh, this was done uh, four years ago, five years ago, actually published four, four years ago, uh, comparing it exactly the same point, uh, three, four different uh, microdosimetric um, spectra. And that is what we obtain. They are very, again, they move together to highest value. But uh, the uncertainty of the spectra, uh, it is uh, uncertainty on the y by this, on, on the expectation value in those, or the lineal energy, it is very high. So we have to work together. And this is, I guess, uh, it is a effort, a common effort in between the group, the research group in microdosimetry to to, to find the, 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 the correlation that different shapes, different size, and different material of the detector uh, lead uh, to a different uh, microdosimetric spectra. So there is a work to do. We don't have, uh, again, a, a sort of unique reference at the moment for microdosimetry. We, uh, we have different ideas. And of course, every group is, is working on this idea. And it is a common research uh, topic in several groups in Europe in particular. Uh, second of all, it is not that one, if, even if we are able to describe perfectly the, the radiation uh, in terms of uh, radiation quality spectra and radiation quality with this univocal, uh, that is not the end of the story. We have to understand that uh, we cannot correlate directly and uh, univocally and forever. That's the same sentence that I said at the beginning. Well, for for instance, the, I mean, the most important part is for, as usual, the dose. So we have to correlate uh, all our data with the uh, integral dose. Uh, the dose fractionation is, is, a, is, a, is a factor that we cannot correlate to radiation quality, in, at, at least in, uh, directly in the, in the first order approximation. Of course, the uh, result of a radiation is also dependent by the patient-specific effect. We, I, I heard that we were mentioning uh, those rate effects that are, of course, uh, the topic of, 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 the, of, of the time. And so flash uh, and the correlation of, of this time, at least it is not possible to correlate directly with, um, with um, lineal energy. And uh, of course, by standard effects and other effects that are uh, also an important topic of the discussion today. And uh, with this, I thank you. And I, this is the sentence that uh, I was asked to put uh, in the presentation. And thank you very much. And I hope I, uh, I was not too boring with these topics. Thanks a lot, Giulio. Not boring. Uh, no, no, absolutely. Your talk was excellent. Uh, and I will leave the floor to Chris Steps in order to see which questions you arise with your presentation. Okay, I guess while we wait for some other questions. Oh, we have a question. Good, uh, Philippa, go on. Hi, hello. Thank you for your talk. And first, I'm I'm already sorry if this question is not that smart, but I was a little bit confused because it's all like words that already kind of knew the concepts, but then it still felt like it was something completely new to me. So I wanted to ask because you mentioned that in the in the micro uh, dosimetric kinetic model. Uh, it, it, the RP is computed, computed by relating it to the alpha value. Um, so then we have, excuse me? It is computed to the? Related no, that to it the... is related with the alpha value. And, and, ah, okay. and for that link, we have the relation to the, to the microdosimetric quantity. Uh, but I thought that when we would use the LEM, that uh, at least when, when I read, or I think I read about the, at the computation of the RBE model using the, the LEM that we also needed to know about the alpha beta ratio and everything. So I don't understand why it, why is it that in the microdosimetic kinetic model we are more spe specific to the to alpha, whereas in comparison to the LEM we are not. not. I'm sorry if the question does not make sense. No, no. Uh, well, I don't know if I'm answering your question, but the, the local effect model, the, 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 
the, the effectiveness, it is of course also also present there, uh, but it is based on the dose uh, or the different doses that you have, uh, well, close, moving away from the beam axis. So the dose is higher and then in that sense, uh, the, 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 the effect uh, of the biological effect, I'm not the, the, the most, I'm looking at the manzit here, but basically the, the biological effect is based on the, of the local dose uh, in, the, in the core moving away and then of course the dose escalating, going down in, in value, uh, also the biological effect is changing in that sense. So in both, in both cases, are, uh, the RBE is, uh, the, the biological effect is considered in different ways. I was just mentioning the difference between uh, the di different approach. One, it is uh, looking at uh, transversal distribution of the dose. Uh, when you go in microdosimetry, and it was the small, uh, simple an animation that I show. It is more in the lo longitude, longitudinal. And uh, talking about that, you will take uh, how this it is uh, dealing and how this is important in terms of radiation quality. Uh, I, I don't think it is. I am the most uh, qualified person to talk, but it, it would be a, a long talk in that uh, we we can initiate them, but uh, it, it is a complex situation. What, what is the real um, uh, site, the, the size size of the site that it is the most important? Thank, we can thank talk you. about but not, not easy. Thank you. Uh, I think the next question comes from the chat and then I'll give for to Florian. So in the chat, we have a question from Valerie. Uh, thanks for your talk. I have just a curiosity. Are there alternative models to the local effect model? If yes, how can one choose the best one for his or her purpose? Next question. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. And I, it is not my field. And I wanted to say it before. Uh, it is important that the person focus in this field. We, we have to listen from the others. And that is, it is important, it is an important part. My field is to characterize with physical parameter, the radiation field and everything else for sure. And the uh, <laughs> selection of the radiation quality, the, the model, it is not for sure. Something that I can, not in, not in front of the, this audience. Uh, I, if I may, I was going to say Valeria, very interesting question. Which model to use depends who you're asking. <laughs> okay, just to say. Sorry. So our next question comes from Florian. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you very much for your talk. Um, I would have a question because uh, you at some point uh, say that you are able to transform this LET distribution to the linear energy spectrum. And I wanted to ask if you can describe a little bit in more detail what approaches you're using for that transformation between the two spectra. Uh, it is a, yeah, so in, in 30 seconds is to say that uh, the distribution uh, that I have to be considered in, in, in a micro dosimetry is not only the distribution of the, uh, of the energy straggling, that it is what I described here, mm -hmm. but it is also the distribution of the um, chord length. So basically, if you have a, a spherical volume, different chords, the, the particle cross different chords. That is possible to somehow uh, convolute the two, and then also mm -hmm. to deconvolute the two. Uh, so basically, to go from a spherical to a, a a flat uh, detector. So the idea is that there are several distribution and we have to combine the distribution. We can combine LET distribution with core distribution to obtain the, the, the spectrum in a, in, a, in a spherical distribution, for instance, or in cylindrical distribution. Then there is another transformation to change from carbon, if we are using a diamond detector or silicon, to go to water or to other things. So there are two processes that uh, we have done. There is, um, I published an article and uh, some also experimental and another couple of articles with experimental results that show that it is possible, it's feasible to do that. The opposite is, um, it is more complicated. 
from microdosimetic spectra to LET, but it is possible. The convolution is always more complicated than convolutin. Thank you. But if you have any interest, uh, you have my email and I will be happy to share it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you very much. So our next question is again from the chat from Julie. Uh, are there still major questions in proton and carbon radiotherapy that need to be answered with in vitro experiments linked to microdosimetry measurements, meaning confirming the LET distribution using in vitro cell survival assays? Again, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, the expert. I would say that what I see if this clinical data are going toward something different from RBE, yes, there is. And that is the base of what we are uh, trying to focus. Again, the focus is to provide the most accurate definition of the radiation quality. And from that on, I guess, clinical people, so medical doctor, radiobiologist, maybe we have to, to, to have increase the precision of the, defining the radiation quality. So the Agiwara data are opening in that sense uh, something that uh, some, some new perspective and uh, for, for us to look at that, uh, to, to, to make our part, not to say more than, you know, physicists uh, saying uh, radiobiology is not, uh, is not our field. We do understand them. We have to, to, to collaborate to, to, to go there. So my point is, let's work in defining better and let's look if there is something good coming out from there, from the clinical point of view. Okay. Do we have time for some more questions, Monica? Um, actually, not. But uh, <laughs> if, sorry, Giuseppina. No, no, no. <laughs> if some questions are still on the table, we can try to manage in a very few minutes. Well, I can try actually because I have the I guess short question. I hope it's short. Uh, it's about uh, when we have LET distributions and we want to sort of have that one number estimate, we can do either the dose weight approach or the fluence weight approach. So, sir, what is your take? Which is more indicative of effects? If we, we do can use the... both of them, but uh, I would not use uh, neither of them. Uh, using both of them, you, you would have the, also the 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 full width of maximum if you want uh, or information about not only the average value but also because you can combine the both of that but of course if we are able to have a spectra it would be much more indicative so we don't uh, cover we don't uh, hide um, uh, under the average some part of the spectrum that most probably are very important the highest part uh, at the highest linear energy but yeah and I'm sorry for for going over the time. Sorry, Giuseppina. No problem, Giulio. It was really interesting. So it's useful for the students to profit all of your time and availability. You have my contact. Maybe if, if you have some questions, I would be yeah. more than happy. And I was going Very to say, good. Giulio, we also have the platform uh, which the students are managing with the questions. So if we may, uh, Christoph and the others probably will forward you to ask those, but also for really opening our eyes to what is more deeply there when we talk about LET and linear. Because in the end, the question I had asked earlier was how relevant it is, is it clinically and radiobiologically? And that's what counts. And you've answered my aspect. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, Julia.